Hello, my name is Mark and I thank you so much for coming by today. One of the biggest questions I get as an illustrator is what kind of pens do I use and why do I use some of those strange dip pens that I use? Well, this is one of them right here and this is one of my favorites and I'll talk about this and a little bit more and why I love to use dip pens and how I got started with dip pens and why you might be interested in trying dip pens yourself. There's a lot to talk about, so come on along and I hope you enjoy the journey. Thank you so much for coming by, come on along. So back in my junior high school years when I was young, uh, we were given a project in our art class. It was a calligraphy project. And I'd never used dip pens before. I was used to using ballpoint pens and magic markers. So our teacher introduced us to these dip pens where we could create these really fancy, funky letters using these pens. And I really just fell in love with it. It was an experience that I won't forget because by the time I got to high school, I was back to using ballpoint pens and magic markers until my art teacher said to me one day, he said, come here, I want you to try these. I think you're going to like them. And he handed me a set of dip pens that nobody was using. And he was right. I absolutely fell in love with them. I started drawing drawings uh, for the administration, like this concert program. It was my first dip pen drawing that had been printed. But I also did charity flyers and you know, I helped the teachers out when they needed little clip art drawings and things like that. And I had a lot of fun doing these drawings for people in that high school environment. Well, as I got older, I eventually went out and bought my own dip pens. And this was probably my first dip pen. It's just a cheap black <laughs> dip pen. Uh, it uses a half moon uh, nib. And if you compare that to a more modern pen that I have, uh, they're not dissimilar. I, they have the same kind of weight and they have the same kind of function. This pen, however, is a little bit different. This is much smaller. Uh, it's another cheapo that I bought. I, I forget when I bought these. These were years ago. And this one has a circular nib instead of the half moon. I really, really enjoyed this one. And I put this one to the test. This is the one I used a lot because it was small and it was easy to use. And you can see it's more like a pen than these bigger, bulkier uh, dip pens. Now, this is the Tachikawa T40. I bought this a few years ago and I just love this. It's a lacquered wood handle with a rubber grip. It's really comfortable and I have to say if I had to pick any of these dip pens to use this would be my go-to because even though it's a straight pen I really just love the way it handles and I love the fact that the nib it you can use a half moon nib and you can use a circular nib. So this tip here will accommodate this half moon style nib that you see here, the Zebra G. And it also, it has the, uh, the circle in the middle will accommodate the circular tubular nibs that I have for the smaller pen. So this is a pen that can kind of handle it all. And I just have had a lot of fun with it. And if you can see it, I mean, this thing's, <laughs> I've used this a lot and uh, it's pretty worn in. So of all the pens I have, that's one of my favorites. Uh, this here was one of my first oblique pens and it's just a cheap pen that I bought years ago and it's made in China you can see there but it does the job and it's really comfortable to use uh, sometimes it gets a little slippery in my hand if, if I'm starting to get you know any kind of sweat or anything on my hand or oil in my hand it gets a little tricky this however is probably one of my favorites it's a uh, custom red ombre curly maple oblique pen and the brass flange you see is a fixed flange and I absolutely just love this pen. I decided to, if I'm going to use dip pens, I wanted to try something a little fancy. So this wasn't cheap. This was probably, I don't know, maybe 60 to $75. And it's just something that I use all the time. So I really love it. And if you look at the style, it's just so comfortable. Uh, eventually, a couple of years later, I bought this one here. This is a spalted maple. It's a spalted white maple uh, oblique pen and <laughs> I just fell in love with it so I bought this one as well and uh, you can see the markings on this they're just it's just a gorgeous piece of work and it's a piece of art all on its own the flange again is fixed it's glued in there and that thing doesn't come out you can customize it with a pair of pliers but I really don't mess with it too much so what I do is I set up each pen that I have with a different nib so that when I do decide to do a drawing I have my different pens with different nibs ready to go 
and I'm just looking at this pen again and I just love these little markings all over it. It is so lightweight and comfortable and you can see the old school ones I have still great pens to use. I still use them all the time and then I have my more uh, elite pens that I use again all the time. Just a lot of favorites that I use. For nibs, I have a lot of nibs. I have a whole collection of them. These are the Zebra G nibs. Uh, these are more contemporary, and this is what a lot of people use nowadays. You can get these online. They're really, really nice nibs. The reservoirs hold a lot of ink, and the design of them, so when you put pressure down, you can have a lot of control where the tongs are, and when those tongs split, you can have a lot of control with the ink flow whereas in the older nibs that i have it was more limited it, they do the same thing but the zebra g is just much more well designed to handle the ink flow now these are my calligraphy pens which i uh calligraphy nibs which i really love i'll talk about those in a bit these are those rounded ones the tubular ones that you see for the smaller pen and then i have my set of the half moon style ones so these are just some of the nibs that I use on a regular basis, and I love them all for a variety of reasons, but really because they're so functional. And I've had them for years, which means they've lasted me a long time, and I don't think they're going to wear out anytime soon, so I haven't had to replace any of them. Uh, the Zebra Gs come 10 to a box, so I have plenty of those. Now this here you're seeing is a chart that I keep even of my uh, <laughs> my Micron pens and my Copic multi-liners. But this is a chart I created way back when just so I could remember what each nib does and the line quality and line weight that I could get from each nib. And you can see, I don't use this chart much anymore because I know what it'll, it will do, but you can see here that this is what these uh, different nibs will produce. So that's what I love about those. Now, as far as ink goes, I use all kinds of ink. I use Winsor Newton, I use Rotring, I use Liquitex, um, this Higgins Black Magic, and I use a lot of uh, the Dr. P.H. Martins. Uh, this is a, a matte black ink. So I use all kinds of different inks. It doesn't really matter. As for cleanup, I just use isopropyl alcohol and just clean up with that. So it's pretty simple for me. As far as the calligraphy part, I don't do much calligraphy anymore. Uh, I kind of fell away from it, but I still love to play around with these nibs as far as the calligraphy part. Sometimes I'll do some writing or something, and they're just fun to explore with. But what I really enjoy is just picking up one of these dip pens and just making a drawing, just doing a doodle like I would with any other pen. They're not really portable. You can take them with you, but because there's ink and there's different papers, by the way, the paper that I love the most is Strathmore's Bristol. It's really designed for this kind of a pen. It doesn't dig into the paper when you draw with it. These nibs are very sharp. So if you use like a watercolor paper, it can tend to dig into the paper. You can get some kickback and splatter, uh, which is a nice effect sometimes. But when you just want to draw, the Strathmore, uh, the Bristol is really, really nice. But when I just want to doodle and I just want to draw, you can see here, this is just what I love to do. I just pick up these pens and I go. Now, as I was saying before, some of these calligraphy pens have different line weights, and that's what I absolutely love the most. So you can see here, this particular nib, it's got that little circle on the end, which gives me a nice, thick, heavy line. Now, that's not unlike having a brush pen or a really heavy duty. This would be like a, a number five, uh, maybe micron pen with a really heavy duty tip on it. And as I go down in sizes, this is called a C3 nib. I don't really know what the numbers mean. I just know what the sizes are when I look at it. And you can see here, this one has a thinner line. And that's one of the best things about these nibs is I can have full control more so than I can with like the micron pens because the flow of ink is so heavy that you have to keep that ink dipped in there and keep the reservoir filled or else it's going to kind of skip and run out. Uh, this pen here you can see I've got the Zebra G and now that I've got the thick line I've got a medium line now I can go in with my fine line now, if I wanted to draw a picture that was the size of my thumbnail, I could use this pen with the Zebra G and it would work just fine. These things can get really, really tiny and really detailed depending on how much pressure you put on it. The more pressure you put on the tines and they open, the more ink is released. So you can get a nice flow or you can get, like I'm getting here, just some nice simple lines and just clean 
clean looking lines and details and that's what I love about these I should note also uh, off to the side there you see there's a couple of little specs what I usually have is I have a blotter page I'm just having fun here with this drawing this drawing is not really uh, meant for anything I'm just kind of goofing around just to show you but um, what I usually have is a blotter page a little piece of paper off to the side that I blot the tip on because sometimes these tips the tips when you are working with them they kind of dry out so it clogs up so it's nice to have a little blotter to just kind of go in and uh, just keep it active I guess is the best way to say it and you can see here you know I know this is uh, sped up a bit but I just really have such a good time with these pens and you just have to be careful because the ink is still wet and you have to keep your hand over the page or at least reach over. If you lay a, a blank piece of paper down over it, well that's going to, you know, get on the ink and smear it. And the last thing you want to do is smear your drawing with your hand. So you just have to be careful and remember that it is a lot, what I would call a live uh, drawing or an active drawing. And you can see here the ink flow is just so wonderful and it's so satisfying when I draw and it's not unlike the way I draw with micron pens or Copic multi liners or the the um, the pit markers it's very similar except the tactile feeling is just so much more intense with these because you're really just dipping in and you're drawing you're kind of scratching you know your paper with this metal piece instead of having a felt tip so you can see here you know it's coming together the drawing is nice now I bring in this heavy hitter here uh, I don't know what the real name of this is I call it a rake because it looks like a garden rake but what you have is you have a piece of metal that's folded over and there's little bits of metal inside of it so it captures a ton of ink and you can see here it's like painting with a brush except it's a metal tip and I really love this this nib in particular because I can do these large areas of ink and have full control over it. I can't do this with any micron pen. There's, there's just nothing I have that will handle like that. I could cover a whole page in minutes without worry with that one rake nib that I have. And that's why I love that, that nib in particular. And um, again, I've had these nibs for years and none of them have worn out even though I've used some of them to the excess. I guess a couple are, are probably not as good as they were when they were new, but um, they still all work just fine for me. I love the investment I've made with these pens because I feel like I spent some money up front, but I never really lost interest. So you can see here, this is just a quick fun drawing and I just really enjoyed it. What I've started doing now is posting drawings on TikTok. Just quick little affirmations and positive messages that I just hope people enjoy and maybe pick up some, some positive encouragement from. And that you can find at MD Campbell Art on TikTok. And it's also on Instagram as well. But uh, I'm having a great time exploring uh, these new technology options like TikTok and trying to bring something creative and maybe inspire people to be creative as well. I thank you so much for coming by and watching today. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I'd love to bring you more content like this. And if dip pens are something you're interested in and you have questions, please leave a question down in the comments. I'd love to answer it for you. And as always, I hope you're doing great. Thank you again and God bless.